everybody! Welcome back to Northern Lion Plays The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. We're building up a half-decent streak here. I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but oh my lord. A male breakfast start is pretty good. 4N93191S. Um, why am I so pleased with this start? Well, it, HP is great and it stands to get greater. You're bundled up now. Wait till you see the crater because the medium men beg to differ. Judging by the hole in the satellite picture. I need to know. I don't need to know like a Mark Anthony. <laughs> Wait, which one is it? Is it the Roman general? Or is it the guy who was briefly married to Jennifer Lopez? Um, no, um, I want to know. Let's put it that way. I want to know. If you're like, if you're born after the year 2000. So that would put you, well actually let's just say like if you were born after 1997. So that would make you like 18 today. I know some of my audience is within that uh, age range. It applies to them. What do you know about All-Star? And I mean that kind of like sincerely. Because it was actually, I think it might be like my generation's, oh my god. It might be like my generation's Rickroll in a way. Because it was like a real song. And it was actually uh, a fairly popular one. Actually, it was a wildly popular one. It was everywhere uh, when the release of uh, Mystery Men came out. And honestly, it was probably like even a little bit more popular than Mystery Men itself. But now it's become a joke, and that's not necessarily ill-founded, but like, is that... For some people, is that their only interaction with with All-Star? That's wild to me, and I know it, I get on this tangent like all the time of like, oh, you know, people age. But for real, like, that's cool, man. It's unusual is what it is, because every... My peers, for my peers, All-Star is just a part of our childhood, you know, the same way that, you know, Biker Mice from Mars is, or the Ninja Turtles, etc., etc. Um... Hulk Hogan, if you will, Macho Man Randy Savage. To only have a point of reference for that as a joke is actually kind of cool, and I, I'm not... Oh, careful with that one. I'm not at all trying to say, like, oh, the kids these days don't appreciate the artistry of All-Star. No, no, you've got me all wrong. I think it's kind of cool that different people, based on when they're born, experience that media uh, in different ways. Anyway. This is an incredibly good run to start out with here. We started with a lot of HP, got an all-stats upgrade, like, right off the cut. Um, hanged man card and a battery allows us to get that tinted rock, but let's be honest, that's not particularly likely. This would be a great room to, to be able to use the battery on, as, or sorry, the nail on as well, if we get the right to do so. Those of you who watched the last episode know that my cat, Ruka, is becoming a recurring element here. He's just standing, well, yeah, standing on my desk next to me, but he's like a normal sized cat, it's not like a six foot tall human individual. Uh, licking his testicles. How's it going, dog? You feeling good? Should you be feeling bad? Should you be feeling good? Is it kind of sad being the laughing stock of the neighborhood? I guess it applies too, you know? You, you might only know Nookie as a joke, but Nookie was kind of like a little bit of a joke when it came out as well. It wasn't a novelty song, but it sort of was, you know? Because he doesn't say ass and he talks about the cookie. Anyway. Please don't shoot at me. I think we will have the opportunity to actually use uh, our nail. We could use it for... Uh, I'm going to open it. Probably worth it this early on. Uh, we could use it for the damage bonus, but uh, I think, honestly, we're probably better off using it to access like all those chests in that weird room over there. At least that's the way I feel about it, so let's try this on for size. We might just be like one room shy of being able to make it happen, which is a real shame. But you gotta do what you gotta do. I'm just going to push these as far away as is humanly possible and we'll be okay. Gurklings are always a little tricky. I gotta turn off the speech center in my brain so I can focus on the, you know, creep generation emulator. Wait, this is an XL floor? Oh, this is interesting actually. I didn't take any red heart damage so I would expect to deal with the devil here. I did go to two item rooms. Why is my brain so confused then? It's okay. Our other item room is the game kid. Do we, we fought gurglings in both item rooms? Or both boss fights? Something is a little weird here. That's okay. Um, I didn't know that this could happen. I didn't know that it couldn't happen either, though. So I suppose it's not like a huge uh, revelation or anything like that. That was a poor bit of damage there. But um, we're doing so, so well on our HP. Just please don't fuck this one up by giving me Krampus or just red chests. I really want precedent, considering this is like a double floor. Beautiful. We'll take both because we can and because we have enough HP to probably uh, come together with a good one here. And the mark has given us a nice little bit of extra HP as well. So, um, let's 
start cracking some uh, skulls here, see what we can get in here. A couple of bombs, and then, well, those were troll bombs, obviously, and a couple of regular bombs. You might as well crack open all these and see if we can maybe get a uh, crawl space, which we did not. That's okay. I can't believe it took me so long to notice that we were on an XL floor. I'm really loving this speed, man. Like, that is the big takeaway for me right now, is we are fast, and I am extremely happy about this. And also, our deal with the devil was very nice. That's cool. Uh, maybe I'll restart my computer later. For now, I'm a little busy. It'll probably pop up again before the end of this episode, depending on how long this episode takes, but that's okay. People are probably asking, why don't you just restart your computer? Oh, come on! I can't be the only one! I can see forever. I like it, and that does allow us access to the shop. I can't be the only one. I don't even think we need anything here. For whom, when a, like, you gotta restart your computer thing shows up, and you can either, like, restart or, you know, come back later. You're always, like, come back later. I'd say you end up with, like, Windows Update 1 of 300 is installing. You really should do your Windows updates. You know, keep yourself, uh, keep yourself safe and protected. Anyway, down to the next floor. Ruko, you're, just, just take a seat, buddy. Just take a seat. He looks like he's about to attack like this tissue box on my desk. Tissue... Tissue box? Kleenex box? What would you say? Probably Kleenex box, I guess. That's the... The corporate masterminds of Procter & Gamble. They got in your head, man. Using branded terms as generics now. What's next? Cats and dogs living together. Always Procter and Gamble responsibly is just my takeaway from this. Okay, let's not... Okay, that's very bad. Um, I'm going to blame that on myself, but I do want to point out I got a little bit a little too much speed, you know? Like a little bit more speed than I'm used to having at this stage in the game, which I think is contributing to me maybe uh, making some dodges that are a little bit subpar, but that's not really a good excuse. But we have a lot of HP, so I'm, I'm glad that we uh, sorted it out early when we were still relatively comfortable. Ideal outcomes on this floor. Uh, absolutely, another deal with the devil would be beautiful, and just more damage upgrades, basically. Actually, seems like a pretty decent room to have uh, the nail on. Good chance, or decent chance at least, for like a crawl space. If we wanted to, we could crush the mushrooms, but I've taken a little bit of damage, so I kind of just want to replenish as much of the uh, spirit heart loss as I can. So we'll just ignore it. And by ignore those, I mean accidentally get an amnesia pill. That's good. I, I deserve to be punished for that one. Oh, that was great. I deserve to be punished for that one because I shouldn't have walked over that mushroom to begin with. Again, I'm kind of I'm still getting acclimated to the speed stat here. It's, it's blowing me away, man. Nine bombs. Nine cents. One key for blank card. I do like blank card, and there is an opportunity for blank card to be better than the nail. Oh, that's pretty good. It's not the best uh, damage upgrade, but it's a damage upgrade, which on top of our other damage upgrades is going to help it out. You know, every damage upgrade is worth a little bit more, I think. I think we get, uh, what's the opposite of diminishing returns? Like, increasing returns? I think we get increasing returns. Um, also, what the heck was I trying to say? I, uh, I like the HP upgrade, and also, that's just a room where you don't normally expect to get something, so that's... Obviously well worth it. I'm glad I took the time to go in there. Plus we want to open like everything that we can open just to see if we can get a card uh, That maybe you know convinces us that we should go with the blank card here Which is why I opened that although it's kind of uh, looking a little bit like a poor decision It's okay Nine bombs I think we should look for our second secret room Would be nice to pick up an eternal heart. Maybe it's not like we have a blood bank or anything to worry about. All right Well, maybe not <laughs> Oh, poor Duke of Fly. Well, the Hust. The, the Hust? The Husk. I'm sorry. You're not long for this world. It's not, The world's not ready for you, man. Not the other way around. I was ready for the world. She was ready for some action. <laughs> I forget how the rest goes. I'm gonna play this Vandross. You gonna take your pants off. I'm gonna play this Gladys Knight. Me and you gonna get right. Anyway. Um, I think we're gonna take the brimstone pickup, obviously, and we're just gonna go. I mean, we do have, it's tower or high priestess? It might be high, it's high priestess. That's fine, like, it is good, but also kind of largely irrelevant. And we got even another deal with the devil right after, so, <laughs> Obviously, somebody up there likes me right now. 
Um, you know what? After taking Brimstone, we should have probably gone back for Blank Card just to have a little bit of a zanier run. Because I'll admit now, Nail and Brimstone pretty much sells this one as, uh, as being basically done. And certainly Mom's Contacts is not bad either. But you know, uh, a, a long streak is made up of a lot of wins, and not every single one of the one of those wins is a zany, uh, tiny planet run. You, occasionally, you got your mom's knives in there, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It takes a uh, it takes a lot to make a stew. Is all I'm trying to say. It takes different strokes to rule the world, run the world, not rule the world. That's a alternate uh, fan fiction about the different strokes universe. I think we can, yeah, I was thinking, like, this looks like a pretty easy opportunity to bomb our way into that uh, boss trap room, and indeed it is. We've got enough bombs to do this, so let's save our nail. Ride a cowboy. Got a lot of pills here. Pheromones. 48 hour energy is great. Speed up is great. Range down, not that bad. Pretty fly is great. I can see forever, we will use. And then we'll probably take I can see forever down to the next floor, I guess. I mean, why not do this? Like, <laughs> seems like a decent choice for us. Uh, sure, if we end up getting hit, we'll lose out on our opportunity to get a Spirit Heart from those battery charges, but do we really need the Spirit Heart from those battery charges, considering our current situation? I would argue the answer is probably no. Maybe I'm mistaken there, though. You may say I'm a streamer, but I'm not the only one. I don't know, that was like Aaron Neville, man. I, I've never, uh... I've never gone deep on the Aaron Neville impression. Maybe that's the voice that I should have been trying to strive to. You may say, hey, I'm a streamer. That's the best I can do. Probably I can get about two words out of that and then my voice will be shot for like a week. Gotta eat the booty like groceries. That's not really a good, that was more like uh, Link from Red and Link, I think, trying to be Aaron Neville, but there you go. What? You Northern Line, you a good singer? You sing much? Oh, you do. I do a great impression of Aaron Neville singing John Lennon's Imagine. Well, that is very highly specific. Doesn't make me a big hit at parties. Anyone else have happy birthday anxiety? Like, can I pull back my curtain a little bit of my curtain of adultness and say that, like, I kind of don't like when it's my birthday. And it, even as a kid, like, as a kid, it's a little different because you get, like, presents and stuff like that. But even as a kid, I had, like, a little bit of birthday anxiety. Um... As an adult, I really hate it when it's my birthday and like people awkwardly sing happy birthday to you. You like go buy a coffee or something and then, you know, well it doesn't really work because you don't give your ID, but maybe somebody that's with you is like, hey, it's his birthday. And I'm like, I don't really want anything for free, man. I just want my coffee. And they're like, oh, happy birthday. It's awkward. You go to a restaurant and they're like, oh, it's your birthday. We'll bring out the freaking hat with the moose antlers on it and put a cream pie in your face. Like it's a bunch of... It's a bunch of malarkey, man. It's a bunch of bizmarkey, man. I I really do get uh, birthday anxiety, like not only for my birthday, but for other people's birthdays. Like if I have to sing happy birthday, I will actually stress out about that for like a day. Not like, it'll just be like a flight or something. It's in the back of my head. It's like, oh, I gotta sing happy birthday tomorrow. It's not like it's weighing on my conscience or anything like that. It's more just like, um, I, I've got it in the back of my mind, my mind is something I'm gonna do. So I, like, I, I've got like a really quiet like, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear person whose birthday it is here. A happy birthday to you. And I just pull that out. And um, I try to sing low enough that nobody else can hear me. But I'm always like, even though it's not my day, I'm always like, man, are people laughing at my birthday song? They probably are. They're laughing at my birthday song. Fuck them for laughing at my birthday song. It's not about me, it's about the birthday. And then I realized that I'm I'm insane, like legally, legally insane. We could have had blank card Awas. Awas was. We could have had blank card Hierophon, which actually would have been sweet, obviously, but. It is what it is. Um we've we've made our bed and now we have a lion. And I mean we're it's not like we cost ourselves a one run. If anything, we we cost ourselves a little bit more likely of a losing run, but it doesn't really matter. I thought this was a shop for some reason. Is my brain okay? Excuse me. Thank you. He didn't even know he was dead yet. That was like that scene from 13 Ghosts where the guy gets chopped in half. Oh, spoilers. Spoilers, Northern Line. I was gonna watch uh, Shannon Elizabeth's smash hit Tony Shellhoub movie, uh, 13 Ghosts from the year 2001. 
I've been meaning to see it, and I was finally gonna watch it tonight, and you fucking ruined it. Well, I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry I spoiled 13 Ghosts for you. I spoiled one pivotal scene in 13 Ghosts. You know what? I'll spoil some other early 2000s, you know, C- tier, uh... Horror movies for you. In Ghost Ship, with Juliana Margulies, there's a scene where a bunch of piano wire uh, cuts cuts up all these attendants uh, attendees at a at a party at a soiree. There you go. In Bram St Stoker's Dracula, there is a Dracula. I probably should have used the the nail there, but it turned out to not really matter all that much. I think that's fairly clear. Yeah, we'll take Death's Touch. And then I'm gonna play this Van Draws. Happy birthday to you. Uh, it's more of like a Marilyn Monroe. That's where really the end game for my YouTube commentary is. Is um, slow. Aaron Aaron Neville sings Happy Birthday to the tune of Slow Jams. She said she got. I can't. It's becoming like a really weird like Michael Caine. That's the best I can do. I can do a really dynamite impression of Michael Caine saying his own name. All right, hello. Oh, Michael Kine. There you go. That's that's all you get there. Because that's all there is to show. I got rhymes in my mind embedded like an embryo or a tumor. But here's the rumor. Dre's in your neighborhood and he's up to no good. When I start singing like this, yellow slamming. So I'm going to stay funky or do some damage. Or I'm going to get too hype and need a straight jacket. I got knowledge, but other suckers lack it. So when you see Dre, a DJ, on the mic, ask what his life is like, he's getting hyped tonight. But you know, it ain't for your good health, but it don't strike if you just express yourself, is uh, really the, the message of that song. It's a good message, I think, for the kids. Also, I think that song is in satire, because, again, I take issue with the fact that Dr. Dre, at one point of that song, says he don't, he doesn't, <laughs> I, I used, like, his exact words. He doesn't smoke weed, um, and then two years later released an album called The Chronic. Which was pretty much like, it was a lot about marijuana. But, you know, that's that's his artistic growth, maybe. Or a tumor, but here's the, okay, I'm gonna stop that. But I'm really happy we got Shielded Tears. I mean, this has been showing up a lot. This Tiny Planet and Mom's Knife have been showing up on, like, every single run. So, I'm happy about it. I can't be sad about the, uh, the Shielded Tears showing up. That seemed like a pretty appropriate use of that to me. Almost got hit there. Remember when we were in like the slightest danger of being in a bad position on this run? Because I barely do. We are like balling out of control at an extraordinary pace here. I don't think we need a uh, sharp plug. Of course it would be maybe nice to have it, but we might as well just donate as much as we can instead. We have not been to our boss room, but that's pretty much it. I don't know if I'm quite at like the level where I want to do boss rush. Like I may... But I could see myself taking some damage on it, but with the damage bonus from uh, from the nail, we could probably make it work. Plus we have the Hierophant to back us up. Like, I'm not using the nail here just because I want to get as many charges stored up as possible for the womb, but... We can use one against Mom to get the damage bonus and still have one remaining for, uh, for later. On the boss rush if we desire it, but it's really going to require a good... Uh, boss rush room. We'll have to see what it is first. I had a feeling we might be encountering Krampus at some point in this run. That was not very smart damage on my part, but uh, might as well take advantage of taking damage right now. Well, it still only costs a half heart, I suppose. And then, there you go. Lump of coal. I think it's literally useless for us, but we will take advantage of it nonetheless. The body? Oh, we have to. There's no question. You have to take homing tears in this situation because it actually makes brimstone the kind of item that doesn't make people just super angry because it actually looks cool as heck. Now all we need is Tammy's head to combine, like, all of the items from the past few runs into one incredible, uh, package here. But this is really, really good. I don't think I need to tell you that, if I had to be honest with you. Probably you could figure that out for yourself. Amazingly, like, our damage is still somewhat not incredible. I forgot that we had Goathead. Of course we're gonna get deals with the devil, but... Uh, our damage leaves a little bit to be desired. I mean, we're two-shotting these bosses, three-shotting them, four-shotting that one. Jeez, I was... I really thought Loki would go down faster than that, but uh, I'm a little surprised by that, but I can't be sad about it, really. Because this is still such incredible damage relative to, you know, what we'd normally be encountering right now. What is the other one here? This is not Gish. I walked on the spikes. That was not very smart. Oh, it's Chad. 
Well, see, we go way back, so I call him Chewad. Chewad. Chewad, Chewad. I G G Y. As you can see, my um, hip hop references don't just end in the early '90s. They go, they go all the way up to 2014, last year. This year, no idea whatsoever. I'm not one of those people who's like, you know. Oh, I don't listen to popular music. I just like, I, I don't really listen to a lot of music. I was trying to think, like, I, I've listened to Kendrick Lamar's new album several times and I like it a lot. Which is probably, you know, the squarest way I could possibly say that. But whatever, man. Ha, hey, Northern Lion listens to music that isn't, you know, traditionally associated with his culture group. Yo, fuck you, man. I listen to whatever speaks to me, dog. You are not the boss of me or... Probably anyone, statistically speaking. Although, when I look at the comments people make on Facebook on, like, ESPN, a lot of people are, like, CEO at self-employed badass. So maybe, you know, you do have some employees under you. I don't know. Um, but apart from that, I, I don't know if I can name a song that has come out in 2015. And that's going to seem ridiculous. Like I'm some kind of Howard Hughes-esque shut-in or something like that. But for real, I we don't have a car... So, oh, the only music I hear is, like, at the grocery store and in restaurants and stuff like that. You know what song I hear all the time? This one restaurant we go to, it has amazing pho. I know it's pronounced pho, but whatever, okay? You know what I'm talking about. If I said pho, so many people would be like, what's pho? And then I'd have to go off on another tangent, but here we are anyway, so maybe it didn't help out at all. Um, they, they have like this slow rock, or sorry, slow um, jam playlist basically, but not the slow jams, obviously, with Kanye West, Twista, and Jamie Foxx. Instead, it's got that song that always goes, it's got the sax solo that starts, it's like... You know, that's the, that's the song I've been hearing a lot lately, because we've been... Eating at that restaurant on occasion. And it plays every single time. I really, I'm trying to think, because I'm not trying to like sandbag or make this up here. You know, it's hard to prove a negative. But, um, I'm trying to think of what else. What, who's popular in 2015? Iggy Azalea's uh, Fancy was last summer. What's the summer jam of the year this year? Is it? I see a lot of people tweeting about Ariana Grande. She she licked a donut or something. Is she famous? She must be famous, because uh, otherwise I wouldn't be hearing about her on Twitter. I mean, if I licked a donut, people would just be like, "Oh, a typical Tuesday," which is the name of my uh, post emo hardcore group, by the way. Is Justin Bieber still popular? Celine Dion. Beethoven and Mozart, all the, the Franz Liszt, all the hottest composers, the lady killers of their day. I should get into more popular music, man, because I gotta, it's like market research. My, the crux of my references are, you know, songs that came out 15 to 20 years ago, and then I mine that for nostalgia, basically, and everyone goes, haha, that's hilarious, I remember that song. Like, that's that's a lot of my, my humor here, I'll admit. But in 20 years, what am I gonna do? I'll be like, remember All Star? They'll be like, All Star came out in, like, what is the equivalent of the 1950s for us right now? What the fuck are you talking about? And I'll be like, oh, jeez, tough crowd. I gotta do some market research. I can still do fancy. Mambo number five is pretty timeless. What's the world going to look like in 2020, man? 2025, 2050, holy crap, it just goes higher after that. I think it goes like 2055, 2060. Then it mixes up, it goes 2090, 2080. It's very strange. Um, let's open these up. 31. That's pretty good. I mean, it wasn't really worth the double key room, but it doesn't matter that much. We got brimstone homing tears. I'm not going to be like, oh, this could go either way. Everyone make sure you click like on the video if you think I'm going to win and uh, subscribe if you think I'm going to lose. Right? I'm not going to do that. Um, but there is still the potential. Like, what? I'm playing for pride at this point. It's like, stop taking so much stupid damage, you idiot, is basically my guiding principle right now. There we go. I got to admit, I, I mean, I love that we just got the pact. Don't get me wrong. But I'm a little surprised that our damage is still sort of subpar. And I know people use that as an argument sometimes to be like, Brimstone is not that good, see? And there is some merit to that. Um, 
But the way I see Brimstone, because it doesn't give you a damage upgrade, really, is that it's basically just a huge bar of piercing shots that don't miss and they hit continuously. Like, they, they hit multiple times. So, it's a really, really good item. Like, if piercing shots is great, Brimstone is obviously uh, absurdly great. Incredible, even. They alive, damn it, it's a miracle, etc., etc. Um, but I'll admit, you know, it doesn't give you the keys to the kingdom from a damage department right away, but it does make clearing rooms pretty easy. I'm gonna stick with 1 HP, because it does allow us to get into deals with the devil, or not deals with the devil, um, boss trap rooms. Not a huge problem. Oh yeah, we'll definitely take this. I don't know how much Judas' uh, tongue helped us out here, because I didn't pay attention to it, but honestly, that might have been a pretty big get for us, considering, uh, you know, we took several deals with the devil, and they were all... Actually, now that I think about it, most of them were probably one hard deals. Um, the mark might be two hearts, and the pact is definitely two hearts. So I think we lucked out there. Uh, Curved Horn is obviously such an incredible pickup for us, though. We'll just move along here. Don't stretch your paw at me, buddy. Don't stretch your paw at me. All right, red chest. We're going to become Guppy. One slap at a time. Nope. That's the other thing, man. I, I don't even know if people are getting that reference now. I'm feeling my myself age before my time here. Like, uh, are people going to know who Vince from Slap Chop is in 2050? I, I don't know, man. I'll, maybe if he wins the presidential election or something like that. Can't be worse than Warren G. Harding. Is that some Warren G. Harding in your pocket or are you just happy? It doesn't make any sense. I'm, come on. I don't know what I want. Your compass, I guess. I don't want your stinking HP. I don't want your keys. I, I'm man. I mean, maybe I want your keys. We'll go pick that up. Um, just don't completely fuck it up here. You don't want to lose a pretty decent perspective streak in a terrible situation like this. I know, by the way, Cobalt is rebuilding his streak right now. I think I saw earlier this week he's at 90 wins. And it's, oh, that was very stupid. He's at Eden only. So this is really, I feel like we've both kind of gotten streaks off the ground. We got a little bit, not quite yet, but we got a little bit of an informal competition. Of course, I have to win 75 more times in a row to match where he's at presently. But the race is on, buddy. <laughs> That's only like a whole month and a little bit of Isaac videos. We want to go to... I mean, we could go to the curse room. It's probably not going to be too much of a problem. Considering we have the nail. It... Was probably not worth it, if I'm being honest with you. But that's okay. Bunch of red hearts. Well, a yeah, bunch of red hearts apparently is the literal smallest amount of red hearts you could possibly get from a single drop. Might need to work on my nomenclature a little bit there, Lou. Thank you. Lou, I feel bad. If you're named Lou out there, I guess there's there's some cool Lou's. You know, Lou Bega, obviously. Lou Barlow. Um, Joe Lewis. Shia LaBeouf's character, obviously, from um, Even Stevens. Um, however, I feel like Lou is such shorthand for, like, a bad cop. Like, whenever I hear about Lou, and they're like, hey, good thinking, Lou, I'm like, okay, you're... You're a police officer who is probably not very good at your job, and that's not a fair prejudice to have. I apologize if you're named Lou out there. I'm only telling you so we can work through this together. And basically what that means is so that I can work through this, because you don't have to do anything. You've done nothing wrong. We are, we are all innocent. We are all innocent. Is Our, is our Lady Peace popular outside of Canada? I don't think they were now that I think about it, but it's okay. We got 10% roughly of Blue Baby's HP left. Uh, it's gonna be three hits. I think we'll get the third hit in right here. Head down to the chest, and this has been a nice little leisurely rebirth run. It's been a nice way for me to ease into my afternoon here. I appreciate it. I hope you guys have been enjoying this. I love getting these messages of people that are like, hey, you know, I always watch your, um, you know, rebirth episodes with dinner or like while I'm making coffee in the morning or, you know, while I'm on the bus and stuff like that. That's really cool. I really appreciate that. It gives me insight, you know, into your daily routines and stuff like that. I got my own routines like that. I don't, you know, I don't expect people to sit down and watch these videos. If you do, that's fine. But I don't expect people to sit down and watch these videos at all. But, you know, 
further than that, um, you know, with undivided attention, just like, oh, you know, let me analyze every single frame of the video to see what Northern Lion's playing like today. Then I want to make sure I get maximum, you know, joke saturation into my brain. That's all well and good, but, you know, it's... I, I accept that it's kind of like background noise for a lot of people, and that's totally fine. I mean, I do that myself. Uh, let me speak to you, okay? I mean, this is like... It's going to be coming out a little bit into your summer vacation if you're younger. If you are... If you're on summer vacation right now from, from school... I think I've said this in a recent episode. If you're on summer vacation right now, and you're watching a lot of YouTube, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. You work hard in the school year. I remember what high school is like. A lot of people in high school actually work harder than a lot of adults at their real jobs, and I mean that sincerely. It's not, I'm not just blowing smoke up your ass. In high school, is you know, pretty much working like, you know, seven hours a day, basically, plus whatever homework you have. at stuff that you're not necessarily 100% interested in, at least not all of it. But anyway, you do deserve a break. But the cold hard reality is that the adult world doesn't really have breaks like that. You go on vacations, but you go to like, you know, the Dominican Republic for like a week. And, you know, you spend like a day of that hungover. So you've already lost there. It's already like half over right there. What you do not often get is like two or three or even longer periods, months, I mean, um, where you can take some time to like learn a new skill and develop yourself. And I realize I sound like the oldest man of all time here. If I could implore you, while you have so much free time, learn something you're interested in, or at least begin the quest to find something that you'll be interested in. I never did this as a youngster, um, and I wish that I did, because now I'm 26 and I'm, I'm doing, I'm learning programming. I'm doing it informally and formally, um, and it's, I mean, I'm not going to say that, oh, it's like so much easier to learn when you're younger. Maybe it is. It's been fine for me, and I know it's fine for a lot of other people as well. But you have so much time right now, and I know what it's like to be like 15, 16. It's aggressive boredom sometimes. If you could, you have the ability to put like 10 hours a day into something that you're really, really, truly interested in. If you find that thing, the summer is a really good opportunity to develop yourself and put yourself for like a head start, man. This is getting totally super preachy, but if I if I could go back in time and just uh, you know learn programming instead of playing a whole bunch or learn to get a start on programming at least instead of just playing a shit load of uh you know nhl 2k6 or something like that i i wish that i could go back and do that not that i not that that time wasn't valuable you know valuable rest and relaxation time but you know when you're learning something you truly love that's a little bit of a vacation in and of itself and i mean that honestly like learning is not uh boring What's boring is is learning something that you're not interested in. So allow me to be very slightly preachy and just say, hey, if you got the time, you know, go go look into that stuff. And what's beautiful about it is you can learn all that stuff while you got my videos playing on the right side of the screen. Look at this little clever sales uh, technique right here. But anyway, um, if you don't, that's fine. I don't expect you to. I I probably got that advice many many times when I was younger and uh, just chose to to not take it. And I'm still doing okay, but does feel like a little bit of wasted time for me. You could be better. You could be better than me. That's why the advice is given, and that's why adults give you the advice. It's not to feel like an authority. It's so that you don't make the same stupid mistakes we made. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.